Hi everybody, I'm Scott and I have a slight obsession with netbook or sub notebook style computers. Um, this is just a sampling here of the kind of thing that I like. Tiny little computers with relatively full size specs. Now, traditionally that's never really been true. Like these little netbooks have always had subpar specifications compared to a full size laptop. But not anymore, apparently, because there is the One GX One Pro, or One GX One Pro One, or One Pro. I've seen it advertised a few different ways, um, so I'm not 100% clear on the branding. In fact, on the back it seems to say One One Netbook One GX. But anyway, One GX is the brand, and... <laughs> The One Pro appears to be the model. So let's just go with that. Like I said, this has the specs of a full laptop with an i7 11th generation processor, integrated graphics, unfortunately, even though this is uh, sort of sold for gaming, which is not what I'm going to be using it for. 16 gigabytes of RAM, which really isn't bad. I mean, nowadays 32 would be even better for a high performance machine and a one terabyte SSD. So overall, uh, pretty damn good for a computer that fits inside of this box, which is like the size of my hand for scale. Although you don't know how big my hands are, but we'll get to the dimensions later. I assume many of you are here to see an unboxing. So uh, let's do that. But if you're not at all interested in what's inside this box and you just want to see the computer, this video is indexed. So you can skip ahead and skip around however much you want. Well, obviously I don't have to tell you that. It's YouTube. All right, here we go. This box is go. It's a nice box. It's very heavy cardboard. It almost feels as stiff as, as wood. Um, I definitely like that. And, uh, well, there's the computer. It's got a little pull tab, I suppose, to get it out. Oh, yeah. It is uh, dense. It has a good weighty feel to it. And you know what? I'll put the computer aside for last. Let's see what else is in the box. The instructions are a little hard to get out. The instructions come in an envelope like you would get a fancy invitation in. A very thin envelope. Oh, and a business card, too. Oh, it's a QR code, I guess, maybe for the online instructions. I don't really know. Ooh. This maybe isn't the best way to show you all the instructions, but I figure you can pause it if you want to read these in more detail. Do not use equipment in the ash. Okay, I won't. I promise. And then the other side is all about setting up windows. Which, uh, well, that's pretty standard. That's not specific to this laptop at all. Or netbook, whatever you want to call it. Here, obviously, we have the charger. Also comes in a nice... It looks like leather, but it's definitely cardboard, but it has sort of like a leather sort of surface stamped onto it. So it looks like something a watch would come in. All right, braided nylon charging cable. Nice touch. That's it for that. And a nice compact charger. Braided uh, 20 volts at 2.25 amps. Maximum. And of course, the USB C connector on it. And this comes with the American style prongs. Actually, they don't have a hole in them, so I guess these are Chinese style prongs. But it is a multi voltage input adapter and it supports 100 through 240 volts, as one would expect. The cable is 
appears to be of moderate length. I would say that's about four feet, or maybe just a little over a meter. Yeah, it might only be a little over three feet. Not terribly great, especially since this is supposed to plug directly into the wall. Um, if this had another cord coming out of it for the power, for the uh, AC input, that would be a little more useful. But then again, it's just a standard USB-C to USB-C cable, so those are a dime a dozen nowadays. And that is it. The rest of the inside of the box is just non-removable cardboard buffering. So, back to what everyone came here to see. The actual netbook itself. I feel like this should be easier to open than it is. I'm just kind of screwing it up. Of course, it has the Intel Core i7 sticker. And the serial number. It says 512 gig plus 512 gig. So this has two 512 gig SSDs. I'm not sure. The bottom has screws on it, so maybe we'll find out when I open this up. And uh, here we go. Very glossy screen, I'll say that. And did this ship with a charge? The power button's right here, dead center, below the screen. And it looks like it did. Little blue power LED came on right there. Yeah, 1GX. And 1GX sideways now. The image is brighter in real life than it appears on camera. It's just very bright in here, so the screen would need to be extremely bright to compete with the lights in here. And this just brings us into the standard Windows setup, as one would expect. Now, where is the screen brightness? Oh, no one wants to talk to you, Cortana. Okay, so supposedly this little nubbin here is like the touchpad, except it's just the t it's just the size of your fingertip. Well, smaller than a fingertip. Let me shut up Cortana. So, mouse as such is this little nubbin here, which is right here, dead center. And as you move your finger along that, it moves the cursor across the screen. It's actually pretty intuitive and has a pretty good feel to it. I am uh, pleasantly surprised. And then, of course, you have the right and left mouse click buttons. And this does not appear to be clickable. It's tappable, but uh, it doesn't act as a middle mouse button. And I'm just going to speed through this uh, Windows setup because it's nothing you haven't seen before. Now, the first downside about this, and of course, any uh, sub notebook or netbook style computer, is that the keyboard layout is, of course, really compact and hence a little bit weird. Now, the actual main keys, the letter keys, are pretty easy to use and it's pretty intuitive. And it's uh, not even, they're not even too small, but the layout will definitely take some getting used to. For example, I needed an apostrophe for my Wi Fi password, and the apostrophe is down here. It took me a second to find it, like semicolon and colon are down here dashes up there plus and equals like you can see it, it's of course the numbers and letters are exactly where you'd expect as with the shift and uh enter all these other keys but uh some of the special characters or punctuation characters i should say are a bit hard to find but everything else is very intuitive i mean like the layout really is probably the best possible layout you can get in this size of computer I'm pleasantly surprised, even though it did uh, provide a little bit of difficulty at first. And of course, I don't think these are meant for typing up major reports or trying to write a book on. I mean, this is really meant for gaming. My plan is more to use it as a very tiny portable computer for work emergencies, um, something I can carry around very easily. 
And also just because I'm kind of obsessed with the form factor. So yeah, let me get this window set up finished and um, I'll be back with some more information and observations about the computer and we'll do a teardown on it and uh, some other fun stuff. It is now a couple of days later and I've loaded some apps and played around with this computer for a while. I wish I could say that I made this my daily driver, but I mean, with this form factor, it's just not practical. I mean, it's great for what it is, but uh, if you want to try using this on a daily basis all day, every day, um, no, I didn't even bother trying because the keyboard is just too cumbersome. Even though it's a good layout, it's just, it's just too small. And, um, well, the fonts render really small. Like, yes, you can zoom, you can set display scaling to a higher level, but that of course means that you have less screen real estate to work with. So by the time you scale this up to where it's visible, you might as well have like a 720p screen instead of 1920 by 1080. So here it is at 200%, which is the recommended and the default setting. I had it at 125% before, which was good enough for me. I could, you know, read the text fairly well, but obviously at 200%, it's much more legible, but again, much less screen real estate. And you can see here just how little room you get. I mean, only three videos across and it's uh, still kind of small and a little hard to read. If you're looking at this on a laptop screen, I'm not even sure you can make out some of these fonts. But uh, for me, it's legible. But um, like the font here, it's the home button. The home, the word home is still pretty small, even at this scaling. Um, so not very practical for daily use. Uh, of course, this is supposed to come with two gamepad type things, two extensions that come off the side of it. So you could use this as a handheld gaming computer. Um, from what I've read those are fairly flimsy and also mine didn't come with them which is kind of weird if you order it from banggood or from most of the chinese retailers it will come with those i got this from amazon and um one thing i wanted to mention if you're an american buyer of this machine buy it from amazon if possible or even ebay from an american seller and it's not that i have anything against chinese sellers or anything like that it's that I didn't know this until I went to order something that costs over uh, $800, but there's an $800 duty-free import in the United States. So if anything's up to $800 you're ordering from China, it's duty-free. But once it's over $800, you have to pay extra duty on top of that. So I ordered something and it was like an extra 15% more expensive due to the taxes on it. And it got held up in customs for an extra couple of days. So um, yeah, obviously this is more than $800. So if you order from China, expect to pay duty on it. If you live in a country other than the United States, I can't tell you what your laws are, but uh, definitely check into that before ordering anything expensive from China because you may well owe taxes on it. And this was competitively priced. On Amazon, this was about the same price for the same level of specs as it would have been on Banggood or AliExpress or anywhere else that I could find it. So um, yeah, just a little tip there. And now as promised, let's open this thing up and see what's actually inside. These are very tiny screws with very tiny screw heads. Like, need a very small driver for these. It looks like there's one screw under this um, warranty sticker, I suppose. Let's see if we can just stab right through that. There we go. This uh, came right up. And interestingly, the screws on the sides are at an angle to match the uh, bevel on the case. I've just never seen a laptop with uh, angled screws before. Okay, now so far one of these screws is longer than the others. Uh, and I don't remember where it came out of, but I get, I'm glad I have this on video so I can find out later. Let's see. Oops. Still got a little catch on this one. All right, so it appears the long screws are towards the back of the unit. Just for my own reference and yours, if you're ever taking one of these apart. All right, well, first off, we got a decent sized lithium ion battery or lithium polymer. I'm not sure which, 8.8 .8 volts. It says 12,000 12, milliamp hours, so 12 amp hours. We do have a replaceable SSD, which is pretty awesome. Uh, 
And there does appear to be something underneath it, so I'm going to take that out. The SSD has this little pad on it, of course. Um, but it's actually, the sticker is branded one netbook. So this is a sticker branded from the manufacturer of the PC. But it's undoubtedly some kind of a white label manufacturer. I doubt they're making their own SSDs. But a 512 gig. I wonder if the other 512 gig is soldered onto the board. I'm going to bet that it is. So under that we have the battery connection. We have this little sticky pad. At least I would think it should be a sticky pad. It looks like it was stuck there because there's some residue. But this actually doesn't have any adhesive on it at all. Oh, maybe a tiny bit right there. That's unusual. Does the battery just lift out? Battery does not just lift out. Okay. Let me dig a little deeper. Okay, I'm going to remove this cover. Oh, this isn't a cover. This appears to be a speaker. Okay. I gotta say, I don't really see how the battery is attached. It might just be stuck on a double sided tape on the back of this. Kind of hope not. This thing about prying lithium-ion batteries that makes me nervous. But I don't see any fasteners or any way of it, that it's held down. Oh, yep. Yep. It's held down with some double-sided tape right there. Wonderful. So I think this is just the back of the keyboard right here. In fact, I can sort of feel holes where the keys would line up. So, that's probably not terribly interesting. Probably all the interesting stuff is under here, near the fan assembly, of course. So, I shall dig yet deeper still. And interestingly, it looks like a piece of metal has broken off here. There's a very jagged edge. And that's approximately where this pad probably was. So, I don't know if this was, there was supposed to be a piece of metal there. That either was removed during manufacturing or I don't think it's still rattling around inside. So it must have been broken off during manufacturing. That's interesting. In fact, speaking of which, what's under this little cover? Ah, it's a couple of inductors, it looks like. And then there's two more screws back here. That I'm hoping will allow the rear bezel to come off. Hmm, it sounds like the rear bezel is actually stuck down with some adhesive as well. Which might make it a bit difficult to remove. Well, that was a bit of a severe misunderstanding on my part. I didn't notice that there were two screws on the back of the unit that were actually holding this bezel on. And while there is adhesive under there, it's not actually holding this in. It's holding some like um, the LED strip in place, I think that lights this up. And that is uh, connected by this connector, which I unhooked before pulling the back off, fortunately. So I don't think I damaged it because I was prying at it with a nice uh, plastic pry bar. It looks like it's in fine condition. So fortunately, I don't think I broke anything. And uh, now we have access to the underside of the computer. And then there's this metal shield covering some of the good stuff, probably. Cool. And that just shows some other padding. And of course the uh, heat pipes. Let's take a peek under this thing's skirt. I'm going to hazard a guess that that's the uh, memory. That's the RAM. But if that's the RAM, then where is the other SSD? I'm going to guess under this fan, perhaps. And some tape by the heat sink. Okay, liberates the fan. Ah, actually nothing under there. All right. Perhaps there's something juicy under the other fan. Hmm. Doesn't look like anything too juicy under there either. Now there could be components on the other side of this board, of course. In fact, there almost surely are. 
So to get to those, we have no choice but to remove the heat sink from the CPU. Okay, I don't know if that'll liberate these two heat pipes in the heat sink. Oh, yep. Oh my god, there's a lot of thermal compound on there. There's like an absolutely disgusting amount of thermal compound on there. Wow. Like it looks like wet cement on the sidewalk. In fact, I'm going to need a paper towel to put this thing down on. Because it's just all over the place. Well, there's the CPU under there. I kind of want to clean off the thermal compound, but... There's so many tiny little surface mount components all around the uh, CPU. I'm just going to end up wiping it onto those probably. So I'm going to leave it as is for now and just try to work around it and not get it everywhere. This connector is almost certainly for the screen, for the data connection. Then I'm going to guess one of these is for the backlight. And I'm not honestly sure what this one is. But this definitely looks like the type of high-density, highly shielded connector that you would use to drive the display data. Yep. Ooh, nicely gold-plated, too. Very nice con little connector. Got to take the uh, keyboard cable off. And I suppose I should disconnect the fans as well. These, are use these have such fine wires on them that you can't pull it out by the wires. That would almost certainly... Uh, pull them out of the connector or destroy the wires. So just kind of have to carefully maneuver out the connector with the screwdriver. And this connector up here is for the speaker. Then these two connectors up here that go to, well, one goes to the display. I believe the other might be actually the backlighting for the keyboard. It's not released yet. There's got to be some more screwage. I don't know what's securing this at this point. I think I've got all the screws out. But this thing definitely does not want to come free. Okay, well... Okay, well on this side, the SIM card carrier was holding it in a little bit. But that's not all there is to it. There's still something holding it in in the middle as well. And it's not obvious what that is. All right, so I feel a bit foolish here. Um, this right here, you can barely see it from there. And even with my eyesight, I could kind of barely see it. But if we look real close, this standoff is actually a screw. So that is how the motherboard is released. There's this standoff here, which goes through the motherboard to the surface below. And then there's another one right here. And the reason this fooled me so much is because the heat sink is held on by four standoffs. Or three standoffs, rather. One here, one here, and then one all the way on the other side over here. And these are actually soldered or somehow attached to the motherboard. They don't go through. So it turns out with those two standoffs removed, this board should come out. And it's no longer attached hard, but I think there's a wire or something holding it in. Yeah, there's a couple of wires holding it in. Okay. So there is this connector here. Not exactly what that's for. Not exactly sure what that's for. And then another connector under here. Sorry, it's out of focus, but you'll have to believe me. And then that pretty much liberates the motherboard. And of course, this connector here, which I already had uh, disconnected or loosened anyway. And now I'm going to flip the motherboard over. Let me put the heat sink back on just so I don't get heat sink compound everywhere. It sticks on there pretty well. And then under here is like a little wireless breakout board. 
Like, I think that's the Wi-Fi module, maybe Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And it's got these little antenna wires coming off. And one of them dead ends on this pad. So I think this actually is not a through connection after all. This is actually an antenna, this little foam pad right here. You see this wire is just tacked onto it, and then it's got some copper foil there. Sort of a weird arrangement, but yeah, there you have it. So there is a bit of tape sort of holding this together, and then one antenna wire connecting the motherboard to the chassis. And that goes all the way around to this little daughter board, which I think is another foam pad, with an, which is an antenna, essentially. And then a circuit board attached underneath, of whose purpose I'm not certain. Ah, this looks like a Bluetooth module, because it's got this little antenna uh, trace on it. I'll check that out under the microscope so we can see what chip that is. Excellent. So now we have one motherboards. This is the entire computer right here. Minus, I guess, the Bluetooth adapter and, of course, the fans and stuff. But uh, this is the brains of the operation. And now the heat sink isn't really covering up anything earth-shattering. Um, I'm actually going to just check out what these chips are because those are covered a little bit by the heat pipes. Actually, no, they're not. So I'm going to reattach the heat sink just so that the heat sink compound isn't getting everywhere and uh, just kind of keep it all in one place. Okay, with the heat sink reattached, I'm going to take to the microscope to see what's up with this. All right, so I've got the microscope set up. And first, we'll take a look at this chip right here. This is an extreme close-up view of that chip's markings. This one's got some heat sink compounds on it. I'm going to move to the other one, which is identical. The two numbers on the bottom of the chip revealed nothing when googled but top of the chip should be a little more uh, exciting and now this isn't referenced in too much detail anywhere but uh oh, this might be uh it's not a spec sheet at least a similar product and it is eight gigs of lpddr4 which is what i suspected since this has 16 gigs of ram it would make sense that there are two such chips here and here and of course they're right next to the cpu which makes equal amount of sense now let's take a look at this chip right up here which is an intel chip so that shouldn't be too hard to find ah thunderbolt 4 retimer Well, that's exciting. Now I'm going to go after this chip right here next to the heat pipe. And it's another Intel chip, JHL8040R. Oh, it's the same chip. <laughs> I already forgot what I was looking at. Okay, so there's two Thunderbolt retimers. Brilliant. Moving right along, there is a nearby chip which is conveniently upside down and through the magic of rotation it's now somewhat right side up and this thing here is an arm cortex processor huh 128k of flash okay interesting i'm not sure what that does there is a chance that's just to control the rgb leds on here but that is just a straight up guess. Then there's one more chip over here that I'm kind of interested in seeing. Slimport ANX. Hmm. Interesting. A low power 4K Ultra HD mobile HD receiver targeted primarily for virtual reality headsets. The Slimport ANX 7530. And that's kind of it of chips for interest on the front of the board. Now I want to check out the back which I'm going to assume somewhere has 512 gigs of storage. In fact, I wonder what this chip is. This is almost certainly the 512 gig flash chip, the SSD chip. Um, it's actually branded one netbook on the chip itself, which is highly irregular and unexpected. 
And at the very top, it does say BGA SSD. So, there you go. That 512 gig is absolutely soldered to the board. And I should point out, this is why you can only get this thing spec'd with 512 gigs of storage and a cellular modem, or a terabyte of storage and no cellular modem, because there's only one M2 slot, and it, in my case, had the SSD in it. But this would have to be dropped in place of a cell modem if you want the cellular connectivity. And of course, you can also get this with just the 512 gig with nothing in that slot. And that might be a good bet because then presumably it would still have the slot and you could upgrade it as you please. And let's see, we only have one other major chip and it's all the way down here at the other end. And this is an ITE IT5570E128. And it is a highly integrated embedded controller with system functions suitable for mobile, for mobile system applications. Well, sure. ACPI, keyboard controller, matrix scan, PWM and ADC for hardware monitoring, PS2 interface, BRAM, CIR and system wake-up functions for system power management. So it's like, a, amongst other things, a power management chip. Cool. This lady seems way more interested in it than I am. And uh, just to the left of that ITE chip is a kind of corroded Wi-Fi adapter. Let's see if I adjust the light a little. Oh yeah, there we go. And it appears to be this Wi-Fi module. So if you were curious, this is what's inside of this machine. It says it has Bluetooth 5 support. I thought that other device was a Bluetooth daughter board, but maybe not. Let's take a look at that next. Here's this tiny little board, which has the antenna trace on it. So let's see what's going on there. Ah, that chip is extremely hard to read. Yeesh. Does the board have any markings that would give clues? There's the antenna trace. There is a marking on the board, but I don't think that's necessarily going to bring back anything, but I'm going to Google it anyway. Nope. That's not going to bring back anything useful. Probably because it's very proprietary. Let me see if I can clean off that chip. It's got a 16 megahertz oscillator. Hmm. All right, let me see if a touch of rubbing alcohol does the trick. I'll bring it under the microscope so we can see it reveal its mysterious secrets together. Assuming it wants to reveal anything. Ooh, maybe it does. Shamwam? Shanwan. Oh, it's actually BM706 is what was printed on the board. Interesting. Hmm, not quite what I was looking for. BM706 shock absorber? No. It's definitely not that. That's a pretty common model number, probably. It also says 2009-1388 on it, I think. Or 1S88? No, I'm not finding anything for this, so if anyone has a line on this chip and what exactly this module does with its little oscillator and some support circuitry, uh, please do let me know. Well, I hope that was enough of a teardown for you and uh, complete enough. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer them without taking this thing apart again. I will take some high-resolution photos of the board and upload them to my website at, at this address down at the bottom of the screen I haven't decided on at the time that I'm saying this out loud. Yeah, go there and you'll be able to see high, high res images of the motherboard. And I'll be back after I put this thing back together so we can look at it some more and do some more testing. So I shall return. Well, the little guy is back together and functioning just fine. Um, took a little bit of uh, checking the video to see what screws go where, but uh, it, so it worked out well in the end. Anyway, um, it works okay as it did before, but the testing I was going to do was playing some games, because this is sold as a gaming netbook type thing. 
Um, I would argue no, now that I've tried it. Um, I read reviews where people had success playing a variety of different games at like 720p or 13 whatever by 768 and at low uh, quality settings. And I don't doubt that that's true. I mean, I'm sure it can play a lot of games successfully. I wanted to try three games. Doom Eternal, Apex Legends, and World of Warcraft. They have three separate engines, and they're three fairly different games, but, uh, you know, all in a, a 3D perspective and um, fairly intensive games. Well, except for World of Warcraft, that's not really, but as far as hardware goes. And uh, this did not really live up to the hype. First of all, I had a weird problem. I have an Elgato capture card, 4K, and I've never had an issue with it picking up on any signal. But for some reason, the HDMI signal out of this, it just would not capture off of it. Um, it detected it as weird resolutions. At one point, it had like a ghosty sort of like um, discolored image. So I went down to an Elgato HD capture card, like a fairly old USB 2.0 uh, device. And that actually worked fine. So very strange. I don't know. I did hook up to a regular monitor and it worked fine. So that could have just been some kind of a weird glitch with the cable and the capture card and whatever. But I'm just wondering if anyone else has any experiences with uh, weird output on this. Because I assume there are plenty of times where you're going to want to use this with a larger screen. And um, I don't know. That just had me a little worried. It could just be the capture card. So I wouldn't blame it on the laptop necessarily. As for the games... Doom Eternal just refused to run. It said it's incompatible with this Intel chipset. It gave the option to hit play. Hitting play just appeared to start loading the game, and then it just crapped out and just left me in Steam, um, both figuratively and literally. As for Apex Legends, it ran. Like, going through the cinematics was fine. The menu was fine. Um, the lobby was fine. But once you got into the actual game, it was absolute dog shit. I mean, even at low resolution, at 720p or whatever, 768 vertical lines of resolution, whatever resolution I had it set to, it was 700 and something. I had it set to very low quality settings, pretty much the minimum on everything, and it was still unplayable. That might not be your game of choice, nor might be Doom Eternal. Um, I did try World of Warcraft. That ran absolutely fine, totally smooth, even at 1920 by 1080 or 1920 by 1200, which is the native resolution of this panel. I think I said it was 1080 before, but it's actually 1200. Um, it ran fine at relatively low quality settings. That game doesn't really beat the hell out of a system anyway. And um, if that's your cup of tea, this system will work fine for it. The screen real estate is really small. And that's one thing I found that even on the playable game and even on Apex Legends while just like trying to watch the footage of the game, it's just so small. Like unless you have the screen really up to your face, it's, uh, it's very hard to use. And especially at low resolutions, like you're really crammed in real estate wise, like maps and heads up displays and stuff and, and, uh, character names are just way too large compared to everything else it was just uncomfortable to play which is to say nothing of the tiny keyboard i mean for me even i'm a lefty so that's why i have the mouse on the left hand side usually i use the actual hour arrow keys on a real keyboard which is fine for me uh these are way too small as you can see but you know it's fine i can this thing's small enough i can easily have the mouse on my left hand and wasd on my right hand but even those keys are a little too small. Like I kept mashing the keys next to them. It's just, it's very tight. Like I maybe have bigger hands than average, but, and sort of fat fingers. So for me, it's, it's not comfortable at all, even when using WASD as opposed to the arrow keys, which is just completely improbable to use. With an external monitor, a keyboard and a mouse, I mean, I would recommend a mouse anyway then sure, it might work fine for you, but then why not just have a larger laptop? Um, anyway, if you're looking for a gaming laptop, don't buy this. It is ultra portable, but it is going to let you down. Just get something with discrete graphics. Even something like a couple of years old with discrete graphics is going to beat the pants off this. And you could probably get one used on eBay for like half the price. Might not have the latest chipset, you know, 
but uh, even if you're a couple generations behind, it's still going to be better than just the built-in Intel graphics. That would be my take on it anyway. And that brings me to the gaming side sticks. These are always featured in the promotional material for, the, for this laptop. And I um, didn't quite understand the point of them. I didn't have them, so I haven't tried them. Um, I'm still dubious. Now, this thing uh, can't run games that well anyway. And it's like, if you're a PC gamer, what are you going to do with, like, analog side stick controllers? It's like, what? You're going to use a mouse and a keyboard. That's the whole point. At least as far as I'm concerned. That's not like a PC gamer master race comment. Don't get your panties in a twist. It's just like, if you are gaming on a PC, isn't the mouse and the keyboard the whole point? So, I don't know. Um, I didn't have these things before because they're supposed to be... Well, they come free with the laptop, but the, when I got them through Amazon, I had to order these separately. And so the manufacturer sent them to me for free. Not as a promotional thing, just because I was supposed to get them with the purchase of the laptop anyway. And maybe not the manufacturer, the seller on Amazon anyway. So I'll do a quick unboxing and attach them to the thing just so we can see how it goes. As with the uh, laptop, netbook, whatever you want to call it itself, nice enough packaging. Seems like it comes with a couple of uh, printed materials. Don't really care. A carrying case that is humorously almost the size of the laptop. It's actually thicker than the laptop, um, but obviously a little bit smaller in the other dimensions. Well, in one dimension anyway. So, I don't know, kind of silly to carry this around when you're carrying that around, like... You might as well have a full-size laptop by then, but whatever. And there are the two side sticks in this. I think this is just a generic case. I don't. Th it's not specifically made for these because they're like not molded into it. I think it's just a case they procured from some supplier. Oh, and they come in Ziploc bags. How cute! There is the left one and the right one so as you can see oh by the way i think i'm not 100 percent but i'm pretty sure that mystery little board inside the computer that i thought was some kind of like bluetooth or wireless uh, device these don't have any electrical connectivity to the laptop like this like this is all plastic on the outside there's absolutely no metal pins so there's no way for these to connect uh, digitally to the laptop other than via wireless connection and so that must be what that little receiver board was for at least that is my assumption because i don't know anything else on there that would do such a thing and i'm going to guess it was hooked up via usb internally now some people online did say be very careful when attaching these um but i don't know why it looks like they just hook right in there there are these slots on the uh on the bottom of the laptop So really, I'm thinking they just go down and then slide forward, right? Yep, that seemed to lock into place. Yeah, not a super tight fit, but, uh, but it fits. And here's what you see in most of the promotional materials so now you can do handheld gaming woo um feels a little flimsy like these have a decent amount of flex to them but i'm not too worried about like if you're holding these laptop dropping out because of the way they're keyed in they really support the laptop so i don't know i'd be a little nervous though in like a bouncing vehicle or something that this would uh pop out or you know if i was really getting into the gaming and like push one of these sticks one way or the other, it might fall off, but I don't know. It seems pretty solid. Maybe I'm just making a mountain out of a molehill. But, uh, yeah. And just in case you're curious, you have two analog sticks, a D-pad, a back, home, and power button. Does that actually power off the laptop? Or does it just power up the side sticks? Oh, it just powers up the side sticks, I guess. Yeah, because there's power buttons on both sides. Do it. And then home and start on this side, whereas it's home and back on this side. 
and AXYB on here. I wonder if these move the mouse or anything. No, they don't. Do they act as arrow keys? No. Maybe they need to be paired, because that one's still flashing. This one is not, though. Look, I mean, they're controllers. So I'm, I, I don't even care, to be honest. Like I said, I don't find this that useful for gaming. I'm not a gamer. I didn't buy this for gaming. So to me, none of these are issues. It sounds like I'm being very harsh on this, and frankly, I am, because it's sold as a gaming netbook, but uh, it's very limited in gaming. Uh, but it's very good for watching video. The battery life was decent at like six and a half hours. Um, it has a very nice looking screen. It has a very solid build, build quality. Overall, I like it. Um, I like it a lot, actually. And for my purposes, I want it as this ultra portable sort of like productivity workstation type dealie. So that if I'm on the go, I can get work done in an emergency because I got to do IT support of a whole bunch of different crap very useful to have a tiny laptop with me and just an extra powerful one because it is for productivity applications it's very snappy i mean like actually quite usable it's uh 16 gigs of ram nice ssd how can you go wrong right um intel 11th generation i7 processor is great it's not a bad little uh laptop but for gaming no and I, I really don't understand the side controllers. It, it looks cool. They feel much flimsier than the actual laptop. It, it's very bendy. Yeah, I, I won't be using them. And I'm not going to be demoing them because, like, all you're going to see is me twiddling my thumbs and the character moving on the screen. It's not going to be exciting. Let's see if they come off as easily as they went on. Yeah. See, that's the thing. They just kind of, like, it takes a decent amount of force. But if you slide it back, it just pops right off. And, like, if you're gaming and, like, really, I don't know, into it, there's a chance that could pop off. I mean, I wish there was something that, like, would secure, like, a screw or something you could add. Like, locking in like this is great. This one's actually a little bit looser. This one came out much more easily. The good thing is this, they're, they're actually connecting into the metal of the case. Like, this is entirely metal right here. So, it, it's going to hold well as far as supporting it from the uh, case of the laptop itself. It's just these do seem a tad on the flimsy side. Oh, yeah, and they're right and left uh, trigger buttons as well. Two on each side. Should have noted that. Sorry. They don't have a bad feel to them. I mean... But also remember, even though this isn't heavy, um, it's heavy for something you're going to be holding like this for a long period of time. You know, in of itself, it's, it weighs this much. I, I, I'll weigh it afterwards. And, uh, yeah, so light, but not light if you're holding it like this for an extended period of time. Oh, one thing I didn't go over was the ports. Everyone would want to know about the ports on this thing. So, on the rear, we've got a USB-C for your power, a USB 3.0 type A port, and a USB-C port as well as a headphone jack, which is a nice touch. I like a headphone jack. Um, everything's pretty much Bluetooth nowadays, but you know. Uh, SIM card slot, if you have the WN adapter. And it looked like there was also a spot for a TF card in there on that carriage as well. And on this side, all you have is out, and that is a micro HDMI. So micro HDMI, power, USB type A, USB type C, and headphone. SIM card slot. That's it. And that's all you get. Headphone uh, jack is also very good because, I mean, you wouldn't expect major sound out of this. We saw the speaker was tiny and located in the middle of this. The sound is not great. Um, in fact, it's, it's uh, pretty poor. But better than what I expected. Let's put it that way. So I guess you kind of already know what I think about this. It is a well-made, nice feeling, you know, seemingly good quality netbook. And those are hard to find nowadays. There's a lot of cheap ones out there. There are cheap looking ones, cheap feeling ones. Um, there are a lot of underpowered ones with like Atom processors and Celeron processors. Uh, this is a fully spec PC, albeit without discrete graphics. And so it's still quite a usable machine for a lot of purposes. And like I said, your game of choice may be perfectly playable on this. 
and you might be perfectly happy with the gaming on this. I don't know. All I know is I tried three games, one of them wouldn't play, one of them just wasn't playable, and one of them was fine. So it depends on your game of choice. Um, I can't test all games for you, and uh, this is more about the netbook itself rather than its game capabilities. And as far as the netbook itself, if you need a tiny little laptop to carry around with you, I would recommend this. Oh, I happened to find a sleeve on Amazon. This is just like a little tip. This is not a promotional thing. I bought this myself. It's for tablet PCs, but it happens to fit this almost perfectly. It's a little longer than it needs to be in this dimension, but I guess you could fit like a USB-C power supply here maybe. And this is branded Lacto. And fits in there quite nicely. So, uh, yeah, if you need to throw this into your luggage or whatever, uh, seems like a good option. I just randomly sort of picked it out off Amazon, hoping it would fit, and it did. So uh, there might be better options out there, but yeah, um, not bad at all. So get it or don't. I don't care. This isn't a paid promotion. I just wanted one for myself and figured I'd share with you the internals of it. That's really what this was more about. And so... Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Chances are I won't respond because I tend not to read the comments. Not because I'm a dick, but because I just don't. I don't know. Occasionally I'll respond randomly. Anyway, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you subscribe to the video, subscribe to the button. Uh, there's a bell button. I don't actually use that. I mean, I'm on YouTube a lot, and I don't use the bell icon because... Uh, I just check subscriptions periodically to see who posted new stuff. I don't need a notification. So, I don't know. Don't click the bell icon. That seems annoying. It, it's, it's like, awkward for me if I post a video and I know people have that bell icon on. And, like, if I post a video at 2 in the morning or something, if you're in the same time zone as me, or if I post it in the middle of the day here and you're in a time zone where it is 2 in the morning, you'll get a notification and then I feel weird about it. You know what I mean? Do, do you care? I don't know. Anyway, so uh, don't hit the bell icon um, and don't subscribe. I don't know. Do whatever you want. I, I have a nice new laptop. I guess I'm good. I might keep them to play with them some more. This is a horrible ending to a YouTube video. You, you can stop watching at any time. Oh, as far as the Wi-Fi signal goes, the Wi-Fi was decent. Um wasn't great. I've had a lot of other laptops on this very table, connecting to the very same access point that this did, and this got fairly slow speeds, relatively speaking, but um, not bad. Like, I think it was maxing out around, like, 20 megabytes per second when I was downloading stuff, and usually I could get, like, 50 megabytes per second on my internet connection and through that access point to this location. So I did end up hooking it up to a USB-C uh, docs port expander, whatever you want to call it, which has Ethernet. So, And when I was testing out the games, I was testing out with the Ethernet connection. So none of the problems were due to network lag anyway. It was definitely just that the CPU was getting overloaded. Oh, I forgot to mention, it also has a touchscreen. Um, touchscreen. I frankly find touchscreens on laptops to be pretty pointless. But with that little nubbin mouse thing, I can see it being more useful than on other laptops, especially also because the distance from the keyboard to the screen is so short, you can very easily just go up and tap the screen. Whereas on larger laptops, you got to go like, you know, eh, and then the screen like goes boing, and then you're like, eh, boing, and it's just like, why? I mean, I understand if it's one of the flippy tablet types that turns into a tablet, but ordinary laptops, I tend not to care for touch screens. But on this, I can see it being kind of useful. Um, yeah.